Within the Christian sphere, debates and confusion arise in relation to certain customs and superstitions. This leads many believers to question and raise doubts about the celebration of Holy Week. Some frequently asked questions are, is it appropriate for me as a Christian to celebrate Holy Week? Should I abstain from eating meat during that week? Why is it recommended to eat only fish? Is it a sin if I don't celebrate it? These are just some of the questions that arise. Dear listener, we welcome you once again. It is always a pleasure to meet, and on this occasion we will address the topic of Holy Week from its origins and arguments. Finally, we will analyze this topic in the light of the Bible to resolve all your doubts so that you can have a firm conviction. Before delving into this topic, we invite you to like this video and subscribe if you have not already done so. Don't forget to activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we upload new content. Let's get started. We all, in some way, follow certain customs even as believers. However, could it be that at some point we have stopped to meditate if this practice is correct, or if the scriptures make reference to this issue? It is true that there are customs that have nothing wrong. However, there is no specific verse that commands or prohibits them. Therefore, if one of these customs were to rise to a level where it was a requirement imposed on all churches, and following it was considered a symbol of spirituality, then we would have a serious problem. This would attack Christian conscience, the freedom of the local church, and finally, the gospel itself. Now let's look at the concept of Holy Week, its history, some of its practices during that week, and finally we will see what the Bible tells us in relation to this topic. Holy Week is the annual celebration in Christianity that commemorates the Passion of Christ, including his entry into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, the Stations of the Cross, his death and resurrection. It begins on Palm Sunday and ends on Easter Sunday. In some places, the celebration begins the previous Friday, known as Dolores Friday. The date of the celebration varies between mid-March and April. Lent continues until the evening of Holy Thursday, when the Easter Triduum begins. On this day, the institution of the Eucharist is celebrated during the Last Supper. On Good Friday, the crucifixion and death of Jesus is commemorated, and on the night of Holy Saturday, the Easter Vigil is celebrated. During Holy Week, numerous manifestations of popular religiosity take place throughout the world, highlighting the processions, penances, and representations of the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of Jesus. The first rules for the celebration of the Christian Easter were defined at the First Council of Nicaea in the year 325. To solve the confusion in this regard, the Computus Paschalis that opposed the visions of the Church of Rome and the Church of Alexandria. Thus, it was decided that the Christian Easter would always be celebrated on a Sunday, which did not coincide with the Jewish one, and that it would be only once a year, since the new year then began at the spring equinox. However, astronomical discrepancies continued between the two churches, which celebrated Easter four days apart. Thus, a new reform of the ritual calendar was needed, which was proposed by the Byzantine monk Dionysius. He demanded in the year 525. It was he who also created the name Anno Domini, Year of the Lord, which allowed the Gregorian calendar to replace the Julian calendar. Once Rome was convinced of the benefits of the Alexandrian way of calculating the date of Easter, it was established that, first of all, Easter must always be celebrated on a Sunday. This Sunday must be the one following the first full moon of the northern spring, so that it does not coincide with the Jewish Passover. Secondly, the Easter moon must take place on or immediately after the northern hemisphere spring equinox. This equinox must occur between March 20th and 21. In this way, the current calculation of when Holy Week is celebrated was reached. Now, in the week it is considered a special date in which respect is respected, and it is recommended not to perform some actions, according to tradition. In ancient times, there were quite curious customs and restrictions related to Holy Week. These included fasting for 24 hours, prohibiting bathing to avoid sinning, abstaining from sexual relations, 
and parents whipping their children as a way of showing solidarity with Jesus on the cross. These traditions have disappeared over time. During Holy Week, traditional customs indicate that on the fifth day, it is prohibited to eat pork and beef. Red meat is a symbol of the body of Christ, and its consumption is traditionally associated with great festivals and banquets. Something that is not typical of Lent, when we prepare for the death of the Lord, but more of the time after His resurrection. And they also claim that you should abstain from certain activities. Therefore, you should not play games of chance, party, or consume alcoholic beverages as they go against the solemnity of this celebration. On Good Friday, you should avoid actions that can hurt people and have a good relationship with your family. More than fasting and maintaining abstinence, what the church asks in this season is to strengthen those relationships and vindicate our bad actions, said parish priest Luis Carlos Ayala of the Diocese of Zipaquira. Likewise, the Code of Canon Law recognizes this holiday as a penitential day, in which abstinence from meat can be replaced by the reading of Holy Scripture, almsgiving, and other works of charity. Now, there are some believers who commemorate the sacrifice of Christ on that date. They do not do so following the guidelines of the Catholic Church, such as the tradition of abstaining from meat, among other things. It is necessary to remember that, despite the strong tradition, evangelical Christians, especially Hispanics, have chosen not to follow these customs for simple reasons. First of all, it is not found as a command in the Bible. The work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection is indisputable. We believe this is the core of the gospel. However, it is evident that Christ instructed us to commemorate his redemptive work through the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Let's read the first letter to the Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also taught you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and having given thanks he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He also took the cup after he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as many times as you drink it, in memory of me. Therefore, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you announce the death of the Lord until he comes. Now, it is more important for listeners to keep the word of God than human traditions. In fact, at that time, Jesus faced conflict with religious leaders because they considered his traditions to be equivalent to the word of God, or even superior in some cases. Let's read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. For they honor me in vain, teaching as doctrines, commandments of men. Jesus Christ himself warned against the extra-biblical traditions of the Pharisees, including fasting and washing. It is worth saying that Jesus Christ was not against fasting, but against a false tradition that made fasting a supposed sign of spirituality deserving of God's favor. Christians do not necessarily have a problem with having good customs, but when they become imposed traditions, we must respond like Luther. My conscience is captive to the word of God. Secondly, it has no essence of spirituality. The reminder of the Lord's Supper has a deep spiritual meaning that requires a complete understanding of the redemptive work of Christ. However, the celebration established by the Church of Rome focuses more on external practices and liturgies, forgetting the true essence of what God demands. For example, abstaining from meat has no relevance for the building of spiritual life, but is imposed by them under erroneous arguments. One of the common practices is fasting, used as penance. Unfortunately, many do it superficially, without a real change of heart. They can do penance with their words, but there is no real internal transformation. During that week, they appear to be religious, but once it passes, they continue living a sinful lifestyle. It's hypocrisy. God requires that we live in holiness at all times and repent daily to be at peace with our Creator. Let's read the letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. For if you have died with Christ to the elements of the world, why, as if you lived in the world, do you submit to such precepts as, do not handle, nor taste, nor even touch, 
in accordance with the commandments and doctrines of men, things that are all destroyed with use. Such things truly have a certain reputation for wisdom in voluntary worship, in humility, and in harsh treatment of the body, but they have no value against the appetites of the flesh. In his letter to the church in Colossae, the Apostle Paul warns them about the vanity of religiosity that prohibits certain practices as a sign of spirituality. He asks them why they continue to submit to rules such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which only refer to things that wear out with use, according to the teachings of men. These practices may seem wise in a human religion based on humility and harsh treatment of the body, but in reality, they have no value in controlling carnal desires. These external traditions have a semblance of wisdom, but they have no value against the sinful nature. In other words, it is something external and not truly spiritual. Thirdly, they reject the grace of God. Let's read Paul's first letter to Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. But the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. For the hypocrisy of liars who, having their conscience seared, will prohibit marriage and will order abstaining from foods that God created so that believers and those who have known the truth could partake of them with thanksgiving. For everything that God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because by the word of God and by prayer he is sanctified, The Apostle warns about some false teachers influenced by mystical, Gnostic ideas. He has strong things to say about them. He calls them hypocrites, liars, with seared consciences. What did they teach? These will prohibit marriage and will order abstinence from some foods, which God has created so that those who believe and who have known the truth may partake of them with thanksgiving. The Apostle Paul tells us why he completely rejected this teaching which is that everything God has given us is good, including food, if taken with thanksgiving and prayer. This false teaching discarded the grace of God by teaching a superficial spirituality based on abstaining from some things they considered carnal. Dear listener, you may be wondering if you can abstain from meat during Holy Week. The answer from the Word of God is the following. Everything God has given us is good, including food, if taken with thanksgiving and prayer. It is easy to follow the traditions of men instead of the Word of God, but it is necessary to be biblical since the Bible teaches us how to please God. Fourthly, they go against the teaching of the Gospel. The main reason for rejecting a tradition imposed on conscience is that it goes against the Gospel and the freedom it represents. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand therefore firm in the liberty with which Christ has made us free, and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. The Galatians wanted to return to following the Jewish traditions established in the law, including observance of days, diet, and circumcision. Here we have a good illustration of the difference between law and grace. The law would say, if you earn your freedom, you will become free. But grace says, you have been made free at the enormous price of the death of Christ. In gratitude to him, you should stand firm in the freedom with which Christ made you free. The law commands, but does not enable. Grace provides what the law requires, and then enables a man to live a life consistent with his position by the power of the Holy Spirit, and rewards him for doing so. As Charles Henry Mackintosh says, the law demands strength from him who has it not, and curses him if he cannot manifest it. The gospel gives strength to those who have nothing, and blesses them in the manifestation of it. Anyone who is in Christ needs to do absolutely nothing to earn or maintain God's favor. To think otherwise is to reject the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, God wants us to follow His commandments. But that thing that God does not command and that someone else, say spiritual leader, teaching or organization, wants to impose on us, must be completely rejected. During Holy Week, Christians have complete freedom to eat any food, including meat, since consuming it does not diminish their ability to have intimate communion with the Lord or to meditate on His sacrifice and death for us. 
Dear listeners, the way to pay homage to God is as expressed by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your rational worship. The greatest desire of every believer should be to lead a life of holiness and be accepted by God. This requires that they separate themselves from the world and draw closer to God. They must live for God, worship Him, obey Him, oppose sin, and advocate justice. Resist and hate evil, do works of charity, imitate Christ, follow Him, serve Him, live according to the Spirit, and be filled with the Spirit. They must present the body to God as dead to sin and as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Although it is possible to abstain from meat, fast, and give alms to the poor, as well as comply with all the traditions of Holy Week, if one does not have a reformed and holy heart, all of this is useless. So we come to the end of this video, and I want to thank you for being part of this channel. Receive a warm brotherly hug and see you in the next video.